Hey everybody, Adam Savage, and I am in one of my favorite places on Earth, the Armor Conservation Lab at the Metropolitan Museum of Art, alongside Ted. How are you, sir? I'm good. I'm so good, good to back. see you again. Welcome Thank back. you. Now, last time I was here, yeah. I had told you guys I'd never touched a real gauntlet, and you set out a, a, a wonderful smorgasbord of 15th century uh, gauntlets. German and Italian. German yep. and Italian yep. gauntlets. Um, what have you assembled today? Okay, so I knew you liked gauntlets. Yes. <laughs> and uh, I thought, well, it, everybody needs to protect their hands and their arms. It's just kind of one of the things that you find across martial cultures. Right. And I thought, well, let's get a mix of different things. But I was trying to pick out uh, some things that had interesting features that they kind of, there was some shared stuff. Neat. So for to start with, I yeah. just put out kind of an old, uh, Something similar to what we looked at last right, time. Right, just like a classic a, steel gauntlet. It's an Italian manifer from 1500 or so, and it's this classic kind of mitten style, heavy duty, shaped steel, very sculptural. Very thick. It's just like, you know, one, two, three pieces. Yeah, yeah. It is, it is quite heavy. Um, and even though it's just quite three pieces and very sort of um, planar, it's also, there's still a lot of refinement to a it. A lot of refinement, yeah. yeah. And, and I think that this period is is marvelously sculptural. It is really, there is so much point of view yeah. and form there. Yeah, and the way it reflects light, and it's just, but it's just a simple piece of iron that you yeah. sort of basically strapped to protect your hands. And what is this? Is it a Wi-Fi antenna? It, it's uh, AWACS radar. Um, <laughs> no, it's, it's because this is a, for use uh, on horseback in the sort of jousting competitions, that right. kind of thing, this is, an extra layer of protection. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and it, it, the shape varies and changes over time. You know, later on, you get larger plates that bolt down and things like that. This mm -hmm. is a pretty early piece. Um, show the show the inside because it's just got this it's, really nice it's texture an to the iron. Incredible in there. texture patina. It's just it's well preserved. Yeah. Uh, uh, and is this is where a leather strap would have been riveted? Yeah, there'd is that be because it'd be a mitten, right? Yeah, so yeah. you need it to open and close with your hands. Look at this. I love this. That's a washer. Just Which a way you got piece there? of a steel plate. Yeah, yeah, you just nip, plate nip, nip with a hole throw it in, in there. Yeah, that's round enough. It, it, yeah, they are often round enough. I think is <laughs> a, is a good, good comparison. All right. Okay, so then you, as you recall from last time, then gauntlets develop things like fingers. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I've got this French one here, which shows a good example of the fingers and all of the articulated lames, oh right? Gosh. That are oh. riveted down to pieces of leather wow. to give your fingers. Um, that kind of flexibility. Yeah. Right? But what's interesting is that when, when you have pieces like this, you often don't have the lining remaining. And that's right. what I've got here. <gasps> so this gauntlet's oh. a bit tattered. Right. Right? I right. brought that one out so you could see what the fingers should look like. But here is a lining. Now, what's interesting about this lining, it's, it's they were often made out of leather. Yeah. This one is linen. But what I really like about this is that that's the palm. This is Not the back wow. of the hand. It's armored on the back of the hand. Right, right, right. So this would have, you see all those little holes in there? Yeah. That's, that's where it was stitched. Oh, right. Into the actual into the leather gauntlet, of gauntlet. the gauntlet. That's right. So, so those are the little edge, right, all yeah. the way up. And you can see all the corrosion damage, you know, from being exposed to the iron and so on. And then this is, it's just stitched in. Yeah. Right? You need to change the glove, replace the leather, what have you. You take it out, put in new. It stitches to the leather. But what I really liked about it was that you've got this nice male uh, palm of your hand there, which is apparently quite filthy. <laughs> now, what you would, what would you want male on your palm for? Is that for? I mean, this is like close combat kind of protection. I think there's a lot of reasons to protect the palms of your hands. Certainly, one of them is you can grasp a blade right. should you need to. Oh, you to talked about this last time, right? On yes. That dueling gauntlet. Yeah. Um, so I think that was that was an established and a common kind of uh, tactic to use in these situations. Right, right. Yeah, the, the rest of this gauntlet, the finger lames are just in little baggies. It's, it's, a, it's a mess. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have a large collection. I don't know if we talked about this last time, Adam, but we've got about 1,000 things on display and 13,000 more down oh here in storage. Gosh. So everything here is pulled from storage. Right. Um, because sometimes the things that are in storage, they're not in great condition, but they're really interesting to right, look at. Right, right. And you can learn a lot about them. Uh, I, the, the group as a whole, just by looking at the study collection. I'm really grooving <laughs> on the um, on the edge finishing here. These the little lines inscribed in well, there. Well, it's it's uh, on when I was making armor with Terry English. One of mm -hmm. the things, one of the tricks he did was he would he would bevel the 
actual edge of yep. the metal to make it look thicker. And I noticed that there's something similar going on here. Like yeah. these lames are only about uh, less than a millimeter thick, but the the file work on them Let's makes them look much more dimensional. Get a view of the thickness there. Yeah, that's like thirty five thou. You know, yeah. that's and and if you yeah, you can't really get in there with the camera probably, but you might be able to see how the bevel does drop down. I don't know, we'll try it. It's kind of like a um, it's kind of like a little bit of a visual trick. Well, and it. it also would add a little bit of stability right, right, to the right. curve. Yeah. Uh, and then notice the same thing here, yeah. that the edge has been beveled in a very sensitive way. It's, it's actually, while this is yeah, super beat up, it's, again, so refined. And also, again, I feel very sculptural. Yeah, right? yeah. The shape of, of a hand and the way it sort of can do that a little bit. Yeah, no, right? that's the whole, like, that must, yeah. That's the critical bit to making a good gauntlet is understanding the, the way a human body moves, and really any part of armor. Right, right, and, right, yeah. And, and some armors, when you look at them, uh, you know, they're made for a particular person, you can see the, they're portraits. You can see the right. body of that person and the way, you know, they had thick calves or skinny right, legs right, right. or whatever, you know. I and just particularly enjoy seeing how big, how much bigger Henry VIII gets over his yes, lifetime. Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. His armors do uh, become substantially more stout. That is, the gets. there's so much to, I mean, I'm just, I'm learning so much. It's like looking at this piece from the back and then looking at it from the front and seeing just, yeah. Right. Not just a simple one, two, three, four, five, da, da, da. No. You've actually got this central ridge and you build out from that yeah. because it's all hinging yeah. on that spot. It's, and you see these, you know, variations in the design. This one doesn't have that. Mm. Oh, okay. Right. Right. Yeah. So a lot of, a lot of variations, but I, I, so I thought that was interesting. That is the male yeah. linings. Are male are male faced gloves a rarity these days? Well, you have a few. We've of them. got a couple. Yeah, and then I got some things here to talk. Okay. About. Yeah. So this one is not male faced. This oh, okay, one has that's the back. A proper ah yeah leather glove. Mm -hmm. Although the you can see the wrist and the, is covered. This is pretty good leather, but you have the the back of it all covered in mail. And, and that's original. This, yeah, yeah. And then you have this nice. Oh, flexible sort of gauntlet. Mm -hmm. And it's got these seats here. Let's turn it so that your viewers can see. We've got, uh, here's a fellow, perhaps he's out hunting. These look like he's European a, a hike. scenes. Though. Yeah, they're, they're probably very general and generic. Um, you know, fellow working in the fields, perhaps. The quality of these is fantastic. I like this kind of etching. Yeah, uh, with the with the black background with the little dots and then all the fine work it, and then I mean, the drawings. Like it was, it, yeah, you feel very much like it was drawn in situ. Yeah, they're just kind of sketched on there. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there would have been some sort of border here. Oh, okay. And you can see the leather cuff wow. lining in there is That's still there. It's so intact. It's a little brittle, but yeah. it's, it's in there. <laughs> so what's cool about this is that what we're looking at is a more armored version of this, right? Which yeah. is, as you, let's get my magnet. <laughs> doo -doo -doo. Dink. What? Dink. It is fully lined with mail. In the inside. Inside, between what? the layers no. of the leather and the probably silk lining, it's fully lined in mail. So you are dressed as a, and you see the similarities. Yeah. This yeah. is what a gentleman, <gasps> wears. You have the gloves, you know, and you've got your, your coat and your pants and your boots yeah, and everything yeah. and your hat with your feather and whatnot. But you need to be armored up so you can wear a, a gauntlet with the lining of mail. And this, that is, this is basically trying to imitate this. Right, right, right. Oh my God. I can't believe what I'm looking at. That's amazing. And it's on both sides or just the back side? Well, let's flip it over, it's yeah. quite fragile. Yeah. And I think that the, the palm is actually not gotcha. yeah, lined. Gotcha, yeah, that makes sense. Although this, yeah, this, this is. Totally. Yeah. I mean, the hand stitching is so, oh, yeah. so Completely sensitive. handmade, <laughs> completely handmade. <laughs> now, it, I don't even know how we would conserve something right? like this. Yeah, you know? right. The leather needs one thing and the iron needs something Oh my gosh, different. that's true. Yeah, it's a problem we have throughout Arms and Armor. Uh, is that because arms and armor is so mixed media, we There's, often run into situations where it's very difficult to 
properly address both. Conserving one thing is destroying the other or vice yeah, versa. Yeah. yeah, So we rely a lot on uh, careful storage and climate control mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. just minimize deterioration because right. there's often very difficult to address the individual treatments of particular parts. But yeah, we have, we've kind of almost got everything in this collection. So do you use, I mean, when you get a piece like this, uh, you don't treat, do you treat it with anything specific or do you just make sure it is in a highly temperature and humidity controlled atmosphere? So the climate is our number one enemy, yeah. right? So yeah. high, re re high relative humidity, that's where the problems start. Right. Um, or yeah. too low relative humidity. Not great for wooden leather. Oh, right? yeah. Right. Fluctuating relative humidity, <laughs> fluctuating temperature, bad for inlaid wood. Yeah. Like so oh, right. So yeah, yeah, sure. So what we like is a nice, even everything. Right. We've got our set point. And we try and keep it there. Um, that, so that's our first line of defense. Our second line of defense is properly storing and mounting things, right? If you, you know, if you've got this male shirt that's uh, just kind of nailed to the wall and it's yeah. like that, you're going to have stresses over time. Uh, armors that aren't properly supported, the leather so inside. So displaying in a way so that it balances the force. Exactly. The piece, so right. support it properly. Don't put pressure on the weak points, et cetera, et cetera, yeah, et cetera. Yeah. Then, so when things come in, it depends on their condition, whether or not we're going to treat it. Mm -hmm. um, so like if this came in today, <clears throat> probably what we would do is we want to get, you know, sort of, we, dust it off, mm -hmm. make sure there's no debris and things like that. We'd right. talk to a textile person. We'd say, what does this linen need? And they mm -hmm. would freak out because there's all this iron attached to it. <laughs> sure. We'd be like, ah. Uh, in, in the end, the things that I would normally do, like, for example, this piece, which is a nice, uh, this is a Turkish Ottoman yeah. piece, which I selected. I'm going to digress a little bit here. Yeah, yeah. I selected because I like the mail and plate thing that's going on, because yeah. you've got the yeah. mail and plate yeah. thing going yeah. on. Yeah. It's probably actually a leg defense. Oh, it it's is cataloged as an arm defense, but that probably is intended to cover the, the right front of outer the... ankle. Oh, and this is the back of the knee. Even though it's cataloged as an arm defense, which is why I saw it because I was looking up arm defense. Right. And I said, "Well, that's a cool thing. I'm going to bring it out anyway because it's cool." This is just steel and a little bit of copper. Yeah, I can treat this very easily. This is not a does not present a great problem for me. There's no mixed media issues on this. Right. Right. I would clean it with solvents. I would wax it. Mm -hmm. I'd love to do that to this, but it would involve removing it from the linen because everything I could do to the iron would stain right. the linen. Right. So we're going to leave it alone. We're because, not going to do anything to it. Right, right. Um, something like this with the leather under there, I can still do this kind of work to it. I just have to be cautious about how I apply mm -hmm. my chemicals and right, my, right. My, uh, my wax and where I apply heat and things like that. Um, so... The answer to the question is, I don't, I don't think there's anything to do <laughs> yeah, this about is, this, except preserve it as best we can yeah. in the best environment we can. It is a really amazing piece. I, I love that idea of the refinement of the gentleman. The armor is hidden inside the kit leather glove. Hidden stuff is a, a, a lot of fun. In this <laughs> armor. We'll have to talk more about hidden stuff. Okay. Um, this is So yeah, this, this thing's great, right? What, what time period does so this So this is from? 17th century. And, um, is that a little buckle? It's a buckle, <gasps> yeah. That would uh, there would probably would have been a leather yeah. strap. Yeah, it's gone now. Uh, would have strapped around, which is one of the reasons why I think it probably stands up as a uh, as a leg armor because strapping it around the leg, uh, I think it would fit really well. Right, it would um, move really well. Yeah, you, these buckles are so gorgeous. I love from I love a formal the, point of view. The little bra oh, copper. Yeah, this is this is unusual too to find just like pure copper. These little decorative, mm -hmm. I don't know, scalloping, I guess, and copper rivets. And then all these, um, these are riveted. Some of them are riveted. Yeah, you can see here. You can see the oh, riveted. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. These are riveted. riveted links. And then this characteristic kind of deep in, uh, etching that's on there that's really not one thing or another. They're very sort of generally kind of, I don't know, vine-like, flower-like, yeah, yeah. but not without being really pictorial. Um, so given the um, but, look, but look how look how flexible this thing is. No, like this thing is like moves like water yeah. on you. And I, I would presume that if this is protecting your outside ankle, this is specifically for being on horseback. I think so. Yeah. Right. But you can see why people would confuse it. Oh yeah, absolutely. It looks exactly like a nice big an, forearm. Exactly. And I certainly actually, if I put it on my left arm, yeah. it would be right in the <laughs> elbow would, there. It would fit it would, pretty well. You could do it. But I think these are intended to be leg armors. But legs. 
have a lot of the same protection issues that yeah. arms do, I think. Yeah, I really like that mail plate combo. Wow. This would probably be something you'd be pretty easy to build, too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, and just, you know, in case you were thinking of something you wanted to do back in the <laughs> shop for, for an episode. Today I'm going to dress up as a Turkish janissary. You know? <laughs> okay, um, so. So then I, I thought this one was kind of a neat segue on that, right? This is. Because what we've got here is we've got mail and plate. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but instead of fingers, we've got the mitten. Yeah. And then a we've got the mitten. textile, right? Oh, yeah. So this kind of unifies. So this is Indian. This is 19th century. It's pretty late, but look at this gilding. The gilding is insane. Yeah, oh my it's God. beautifully laid in there. They've actually gone over a crack in here, and it's perfect. It just kept going. Yeah. And you've got these, this nice, uh, you know, hem oh, look at that. edging, I guess, and it's brass It's tarnishing rivets. the brass rivets yeah, it is. just a tad. And then check this out, though. It, the pin is missing, but this is how you put it on. You wow. close this hinge and then put the hinge pin in. They lock you in entirely. Out. And then, remember we talked about the strap in there? Mm -hmm. Well, that's what oh, these are. It's so a you very refined and lovely ones, strap. A much nicer one. yeah, right. Wow. And very comfortable, padded, you know. Yeah. But it keeps your fingers free. Well, and this mail is like yeah. mithril. And is that gold diamonds? Golden male brass. diamonds? They're brass. Brass, brass but links, still, yeah. if you that's, I've up. never seen a pattern in mail in, materi in oh, differential material. Oh, you should go upstairs in the galleries. There's some, um, <laughs> uh, you might be able to get Sean to talk about it, but there's some mail shirts with like inscriptions written into the mail and things like that, like they look like this. It's, that's amazing. It's pretty amazing stuff, yeah. Wow. This velvet is phenomenal shape. Well, it's in good condition. Right. It's pretty recent. It's like yeah, 150, 175 yeah. years old. But it looks pretty comfortable to wear, I it gotta really say. It really does. And then you just lock it around your wrist. Well, and I, I guess your squire probably closes it up for you. And then that would you know, hang over your hand like so. This is, I mean, and if you, all the way to this, these are so beautiful. Yeah, I think these are meant to be peacocks of some kind. Oh. That's my interpretation. Anyway. Oh, right. Yeah, I see what you mean. But look, and then you got different patterns, like so many different things happening here. It's marvelously decorated. I really like it. It's an amazing piece. But we can go one better. Okay. <laughs> this, this is South Indian, and feel the weight on that. This is, oh, this is all God. you know, hand cut. Really? Yeah. <sighs> Same construction. Cry. You got the hinge with the pin that you pull out. It would have had... Yeah, probably yeah. a mitten. Also, the same um, detail here yep. at the top of the wrist there. But but hold it up next to it, and you see how different they really are. Yeah. Like, same basic form. Right. Same. And honestly, there's really you know a tube around your arm. That's how you protect right, the right, arm. Right. Right. <laughs> right. But the decoration and construction ends up being substantially different. That is, I cannot believe that a human being sat there and chiseled this. We call it lunatic work. <laughs> I was gonna say. I wanna show you one more piece. Oh, okay. Which I think kind of completes our, our world trip here. Right? Okay. So we've gone from Italy and Germany through Turkey to India, and yeah. now we're gonna go to Japan. <gasps> oh, this okay. is part of this? That's, that's, this, is, this is the Japanese. So we're still protecting the hand and yeah, the, and the yeah. arm here, but the, the Japanese solution <laughs> was to make the whole sleeve out of it. So this is called a kote, mm -hmm. and there's lots of different types of kote, and I'm not going to get into the weeds on the details on that. But this type of armor starts in about the 11th century, the okay. Heian period. The 11th century. And at that time, it was from about here to here, yeah. and really only armored about here. Okay. Over time, as uh, the battlefield styles change, as mm -hmm. fashion changes, as you know, we move from being a primarily horse-mounted, uh, archery warrior class to foot mounted and carrying swords and so on, uh -huh. Uh -huh. the armors change. So I pulled this one out as a semi-representative example. It has a couple of extra neat features, um, but basically what we're looking at is what's probably hemp. It's a yeah. full sleeve, and we can look on the underside here, and you'll see oh that my God, it's it full sleeve condition. lined with leather, yeah. uh, and, and it, it laces together so you can really get it comfortable. Okay. That's, that's a horn oh. toggle. Oh. And you got little reinforced uh, leather patches. This is um, doe skin leather, and they stencil it. And then that, that whole hem is the same type of thing. The it's, whole hem is doe skin leather? Yeah. 
and I, it's it's like brain tanned, and then they clean it and stencil it <laughs> and uh, stitch it on around this hand. But here's the cool bit. Where'd my magnet go? Let's do it here. There's mail. All the way up. Entirely encapsulating the arm inside the hemp. And then mail stitched onto the top of it with these, these plates. So then presumably here there's two layers of mail. Yeah, it seems to be. I, I haven't taken it apart to yeah, really yeah. determine that. But that appears to be the case. All the way through. And then this, these pieces are iron. They're iron, as are all the uh, rings. It's a different style of mail. Here, where's the piece? Oh, of... look at that style. So this is a you know sort of traditional four-in-one kind of yeah, yeah style. Yeah. And this is you have a, these central rings. This is like little... rope memory. Um, <laughs> it is like core yeah. memory. Yeah. So, but just little bridging uh, hooks that you know between the rings, and then it's so it, it's easy to place these plates in. I think it's probably one of the reasons why they do that. Right. Right. This would attach to the shoulder strap of the cuirass. Okay. But you've yeah. got all this extra stuff, so it ties around the neck. So you put this on first, and it ties in the back, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. it ties up here, and then you put on the cuirass. Right. And buckle your arms to the sleeve, so now they're kind of hanging from this big shoulder strap here, which takes some of the weight off and makes nice, it more comfortable. Nice, right. But you've got all this extra protection in here, where it is kind of- From this. Yeah, this is giving right. you yeah, yeah. nail protection around your neck, and then you still might have another pad under there. You've got the the mask yeah. protecting the, yeah. the skirt on the helmet protecting everything. So, but they've they've gone for mobility over, you know, over invulnerability. Brute protection, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, this is such fundamentally different philosophies yeah. of protection and movement. But you can see, you know, throughout the world, we're using a lot of the same principles because the bodies are the same. Yeah, the materials are the same. I can't get over these pieces here, how, um, actually, how light they are, considering. Yeah. I don't even know how, is, do you know how this is made? I, I don't for sure. I've always assumed that they were forged. Yeah. There's so much protection going on, but there's, like, the amount of attention being paid to the non-protective aspects, to the aesthetics. It's especially true with these it, types it's, of armors. It's yeah. pretty mind blowing, and the condition it's in. What time is this from? This is this is Edo period, late Edo. Okay. Uh, so this is like I think eighteen twenty something. Okay. Okay. And then here, let's just flip it over so you can see the yeah, underside yeah. as well more clearly. There we go. So your armpit right. has male right. protection, right? It fully straps around your armpit there. It looks quite comfortable. I, I think I could enjoy wearing it. <laughs> it looks to be the most comfortable of all of these pieces. I imagine it gets warm. Yeah. Particularly once you've got on the dough and the hydate and the suniate and the sode and the helmet and everything. You know, you're just covered in stuff. This, I, I, why I just that little patch? Because covered. you're bending, I really? think. Really? Oh, I think. wow. That's a, it seems like that would be a potentially a, weak spot right. that they reinforce. So you reinforce with a little dough skin yeah. leather. And this is beautiful leather here. Yeah. Your this back is, your hand there. This is such a great spread spectrum. Over several hundred years, yeah, over several yeah. thousand miles. Yeah. Uh, it's, I, like, I don't even, I, I, of course, part of me, you know, wants to end the video with some sort of encapsulation, but it's mostly just like, what a breadth of, of, of design ideas, protection ideas, material execution. Thank you. Absolutely. Uh, it's real, man. <laughs>